This is lesson 7-8, fractions in simplest form. And our goal today is going to be able to uh, simplify fractions. We're going to be using our knowledge of prime factorization, uh, and that's going to lead us to fractions in their simplest form. This is the key lesson, as uh, every fraction operation that we're going to be doing is going to end with this particular skill. So you really need to know how to simplify fractions. All right, in order to succeed with this lesson, you're going to need to know, number one, prime factorization. That was from lesson 7-2. And you're going to know, uh, or need to know, greatest common factor, which is lesson 7-3. There is one method that I'm going to show you that you don't need the greatest common factor. Uh, and so if you choose the greatest common factor method, you are obviously going to need to know uh, that particular skill. Numerator and the denominator, those are the two um, vocabulary that you're going to hear a lot. Here's our notes. How do I simplify fractions? The two methods I'm going to show you, choose the one that you're going to do and stick with it until you become an expert at it. <clears throat> and also, how do I know when fractions are in their simplest form? A lot of people make up all kinds of rules. There are uh, three rules that we're going to be going by. All right, here are the two methods. All right, both of them require prime factorization. and um, one is the greatest common factor method. That is the traditional method that's uh, been taught since I was in uh, fifth grade uh, many, many years ago. And prime factorization is, uh, well, it's not n new, but it's uh, new to fifth grade. So <clears throat> let's take on simplifying uh, 12 over 18 using the greatest common factor method. Like I said, both of them require prime factorization. So Let's factorize the numerator, which is 12, and the denominator, which is 18. And our goal is to find the greatest common factor and then divide the 12 by something and the 18 by the exactly the same number. And if we divide both of those by the same number, we're going to get a um, smaller number, and it's going to be equivalent to 12 over 18. <clears throat> 2 times 6 is going to be factors of 12 and then 2 times 3 of all the factors of 12 and they are 2 times 2 times 3. Factorizing 18 into its prime factors you get 2 times 9, 2 is a prime number, and then 3 times 3 is a, 2 factors that make 9. So for 18 we have 2 times 3 times 3. All right, so we're going to be doing that uh, all the time, regardless of you, whether you uh, choose to do greatest common factor or the prime factorization method. Either way, you can have to start this way. All right, so uh, when we are finding the greatest common factor, we have to, again, circle the pairs. All right, there's a pair not a pair, and then the third one is a pair there. So our prime factors are 2 and 3 that they have in common, and since they are factors, they get multiplied together, and so the greatest common factor equals 6. And then what we're going to be doing is taking the numerator, 12, and the denominator, 18, and dividing both of those by 6. 12 divided by 6 equals 2. 18 divided by 6 equals Three, uh, and here we have it fraction in its simplest form so 12 over 18 equals 2 over 3 and so we've made equivalent fractions and we've reduced the number uh, so if you're going to be using the greatest common factor method number one we found prime factorization number two we identify the greatest common factor and then number three we divided Uh, it's numerator and denominator by GCF. All right, so there's our uh, notes, basically, that we um, can be writing in our notes now if you're going to be choosing this method, traditional method. Worked when I was a boy, works now. All right, the prime factorization method does the same thing. Uh, to start off with. So I'm going to actually just copy these. All right, so whoop, that 
wasn't copy. Undo. I missed it somehow. There's the copy. I'm going to drag it over here. So um, just copy the same thing down because we're going to start with prime factorization. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the prime factorization of the numerator and the denominator and we're going to write it out just as if we uh, started before. So what's the prime factors of uh, 12? They are 2 times 2 times 3. And then the prime factorization of 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. All right, now we talked about the prime factorization and canceling out the ones. Here we have our opportunity. All right, so we see this still as a fraction, 12 over 18, and we see that as 12 over 18. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. 2 times 3 times 3 is 18. <clears throat> and within that, there's a whole bunch of ones, and we're going to cancel out the ones. Here's one of the ones. 2 over 2 is a 1. So if you remember from the greatest common factor method, we circled the um, thing they had in common. This time, we're going to cross out the thing they had in common. So they have the 2 in common. They have the 3 in common. Whatever is left over is the fraction in its simplest form. <clears throat> so right now, they have the 2 left over and the 3 left over. So fraction in its simplest form, 2 over 3, or 2 thirds. So if you're doing the greatest common uh, factor method, here's your notes. If you're doing the prime factorization, here's your notes. First, do prime factorization. Number two, cancel out ones. Uh, and then number three, left over is uh, simplest. All right, kind of a, a little bit messy there, but um, I'll highlight it so it's slightly easier to see. Okay, so there we have our notes for prime factorization method, and here we have our notes for the greatest common factor method. Uh, either way, uh, it's your choice. Just make sure that when you do one, you stick with it and master it. All right, moving on to the guided practice now. So if you didn't already have a piece of graph paper out, get one out now. Uh, the thing that I'm going to show you is the prime factorization method. Um, the greatest common factor method uh, you've seen is very, very similar. In fact, maybe I'll do uh, greatest common factor for one and prime factorization from an, for another. All right, but they both start uh, exactly the same way. So uh, we're going to find the prime factors of 8, and we're going to prime, find the prime factors of 20 and list them. So 8, you will have 2 times 4. And I don't know why I circled that. 2 times 2 are our prime factors. In fact, uh, let me get rid of that. OK. So 2 times 2 times 2 is the um, prime factors of 8. And then for 20, you have uh, 2 times 10 and 2 times 5. Soon, doing these enough, you will memorize a lot of these. All right, using the greatest common factor method, we're going to be uh, finding the greatest common factor now. Here's something that they have in common, the 2s. Anything else? No. So uh, the greatest common factor method would be 2 times 2 is the greatest common factor. So that equals 4. And then um, turning that into simplest form, you take the fraction, 8 over 20, divide the 8 by the greatest common factor, divide 20 by the greatest common factor. Uh, and that would equal 8 divided by 4 is 2. 20 divided by 4 is 5. Now, if you were doing the um, prime factorization method, look what's left. 2 over 5. 2 over 5. So uh, instead of circling, let's cross out. So uh, I prefer the um, prime factorization method. Again, it's up to you which one that you want to do and perfect. Moving on. Number 2, simplify 3 over 63, finding the prime factors of both. And 
some people are saying well they're both uh, prime numbers and so they must be in the simplest form and 63 is not a prime number so um, <coughs> uh, the number 3 is already a prime number so if I'm listing out the prime factors 3 is it 63 is 9 times 7 though and so uh, we have 7 and then we have 3 times 3 3 times 3 times 7 and then uh, crossing out this is going to be the prime factorization method so we're going to be crossing out <coughs> uh oh we well, don't have anything up here all right again we talked about this in an earlier lesson anytime you have factors one of the factors is always going to be one all right so um, you're never gonna have a zero up there so what's our fractions 3 over 63 equals 1 over 3 and 7 which multiplied together make 21 so what is the simplest form it's 1 and then again these are factors so they need to be multiplied 3 times 7 equals 21 and there's our simplest form and I'm going to run through these pretty quickly simplifying 8 over 19 and 8 and 19 8 we already did it's 2 times 4 and then 2 times 2 so you have 2 times 2 times 2 over here you have the 19 which is well it's 1 times 19 it's already a prime factor so it has a factor of 19 and 1 so <coughs> let's see you got 2 and 19 and 2 and 1 and they have nothing in common other than the 1 so the greatest common factor is 1 and that is already in its simplest form so that is your answer to uh, how do you know if it's a fraction is in its simplest form if the greatest common factor is a 1 it's already in its simplest form I'm going to highlight that for your notes and right, moving on to the last example problem uh, we're going to be simplifying 50 over 90 and so again starting with prime factorization all right 50 is uh, 5 times 10 5 is prime number and 2 times 5 so our um, prime factors of 50 are 2 times 5 times 5 and again we're going to be finding the prime factors all the time so um, we'll get very very good at it so uh, let's see the number 90 is 10 times 9 neither one of those with prime factors and so we need to keep going with our uh, factor tree that's 2 times 5 and that is 3 times 3 and so what do they have in common or what are all the prime factors of 90 there are 2 times 5 times 3 times 3 all right finding the greatest common factor we would be circling these things and so it'd be 2 times 5 2 times 5 and the greatest common factor then would be 10 but since we are uh, mostly going to be doing the prime factorization method where you cancel these things out we're just going to cross them out and so what do we have on top we have 5 and what do we have on the bottom or the denominator it's 3 times 3 equals 9 just remember that when you have two factors uh, in the denominator or in the numerator they must be multiplied together uh, and then <coughs> rewritten as a fraction with just one number uh, on the the top or one number on the bottom here's our task today uh, we're going to do h7-8 that's out of the workbook and you're going to do problems 1 through 23 but only the odd problems all right so you're not going to be doing uh, all those even problems just the odd ones uh, and a reminder choose a method that works for you and perfect it and don't forget to write your notes we'll be checking them uh, when you come in tomorrow all right good luck here is the three ways that you can tell something's in its simplest form